Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today I've got my friend Justin Earhart of Premium Hunts. Justin, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, Jay? Good. I'm looking forward to talking to you. We're getting really close to the Arizona application deadline for elk and antelope. Uh, we're sitting here literally uh, next Tuesday on February 11th. The applications are due. Uh, wanted to get in touch with you and get kind of a report for the country you like to hunt. Uh, Want to give you a chance to kind of uh, introduce yourself, where you're from, the country you like to hunt there, and then we'll dive in and I'll ask you a bunch of questions about it. So why don't you tell the guys where you, where you live and the units that you hunt. Okay, so we're based right out of Springerville, Arizona. Um, it's on the east side of the state. We're only 10 miles from the New Mexico state line, and we mainly focus on units 1, 2, and 27. Justin, um, you also have an operation in New Mexico, and when we do my podcast on the New Mexico uh, applications, we'll, we'll talk about New Mexico, but you also do uh, elk hunts. Uh, and some other species in New Mexico. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we're based right here on the Arizona-New Mexico state line, so we basically get to hunt the best of both worlds. And uh, there's some really good hunting in New Mexico to be had. So, you know, if anybody out there is looking to utilize the outfitter draw, um, feel free to contact us at any time, and we'll get something squared away with you. Justin, you guys, um, I look at your Instagram photos, encourage the listeners to check it out. It's um, Premium Hunts on Instagram. And, um, you know, you guys, you guys, you're, you're kind of the sleeping giant, in my opinion. You guys uh, just get the job done. You guys kill some big bulls. You guys had a really good year. It's Premium underscore Hunts on Instagram. I look through your photos, though, and you guys, last year, you had a bang-up year. I mean, you shot some phenomenal bulls. Yeah, last year, you know, we were fortunate enough to get a really good winner, and that obviously helped out a lot. But, I mean, we, we've got a great team. Um, everybody who works with us is just top-notch, and they, they put forth 100% effort. So, really, you know, our... Our success is just the way that everybody hunts together and, and they all put forth 100% effort. It just works out great. Yeah, so talking about Unit 1 and 27, you know, we can only do, we can only take the information that we have in front of us and then try and make a good decision and move forward. As far as moisture, um, you know, what have you seen throughout the fall and winter so far uh, which would lead you to kind of extrapolate and make conclusions for how this upcoming season is going to be? What what are we looking at? I think it's going to be another really good year, uh, possibly even better, you know, with two good winters in a row. I mean, we've got hit with a lot of rain um, early, you know, mid-November and then the early part of December, it turned into a lot of snow and, and the mountains still got quite a bit of snow up there and We've been getting a few flurries here and there still, so it's uh, it's looking to be a really good year for moisture. Let's talk about um, you know unit one. You do the archery hunts. You do the you know the early firearm season. You do the late hunts. Uh, let's talk about unit one first and foremost. Uh, talk about the archery season. I'm looking at Go Hunt Insider. Uh, for non-residents, you've got 18 points. It looks like is a guarantee to draw unit one. If you have 17 points as a non-resident, you have a 69% chance to draw. Um, seems like, Justin, every year that number is creeping up and getting higher and higher. Your thoughts on that with unit one? Yeah, the, the point creep, no doubt, it's, it's playing its part in uh, a lot of guys chasing the unit, but you know, it's a good unit. Um, it, it's a more action-packed hunt than, say, Unit 27. But it's, uh, you know, over the past few years, they've really hammered it, to be honest, Jay. They've they've hurt the age class quite a bit. Um, there's still some great bulls to be had, but you have to work 
extra, extra hard to find them and then get your crack at them. Um, they did cut back on the tags this year. I think in Unit 1, overall, I want to say they dropped the bull permit. Uh, combined probably 130 tags through all the seasons, so that's, mm -hmm. that's going to help bounce it back. So, but wouldn't you agree, Justin, that the main, the predominant source of drop in the age class has been the late hunts in Unit 1 because of the fire, because of the accessibility and being able to get around and glass those bulls up in the burn, those late hunts have really hurt the age class, I would think, more than the archery hunts or the early firearm seasons. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. The late hunt is where all these units are getting beat up. Um, you know, the the late hunt, I believe last year there was 375 tags in Unit 1, and now there's 300 this year. So that's going to help. But also um, what's going to help the Unit 1 archery season is a lot of the bulls from 27 will go to Unit 1 to rut, and they also dropped the tags in Unit 27 late hunt by 60, I believe. So... Unit 1, 2B, and 2C, um, I noticed you said, you know, you guide in 1, 2, and 27. Those are kind of your focus units. Are there some decent bulls in the two units, um, in the 2Bs, 2Cs, uh, or would you say that most of the elk hunting that takes place in that 1, 2B, 2C tag is in Unit 1? You know, there, there are some great bulls in those units but they are few and far between. I mean, it's just those units are, are areas where you might spend a few days without seeing an elk in them. But, you know, generally if you can find a pocket of elk that, you know, when they're rutting, it's it's going to have a nice bull with it. Um, but when, it, when they pair them up with, say, Unit 1, it's... It's almost crazy to leave Unit 1 to go hunt it unless you have one of those bulls pre-scouted and, and pinned down, and, and it's super, super hard to do in those units. What would you say, you know, someone that's looking at the 1, 2B, 2C archery hunt, you know, with the non-resident, you know, taking 18 points to get the tag, as far as quality, realistic expectations and quality expectations for that hunt, I mean, what kind of bulls are you seeing on an everyday basis? What kind of bull would be your target goal for someone that, you know, has shot some bulls with his bow and, a, a, you know, an avid archer can get around really good? Um, you know, what would maybe be the target goal uh, for, for a benchmark uh, in, in Unit 1? You know, I, I think if a guy comes out and, and you know, he's, he's got some bulls under his belt and everything and, and he wants to hunt for a 350-plus bull, um, that's a doable benchmark. Um, is, is it a guarantee? Heck no, it's it's still tough. It's still hunting. And like I said, the age class has been beat up pretty good, but they're there. I mean, this past season we chased some really, really big bulls in the archery season, um, flung some arrows, just never, never got the connection. Um, so they're there. The big bulls are there. Uh, they're just super hard to dig up there's not many um but probably your average bull you're going to be looking at is going to be a 320 kind of bull and in unit one i mean are there still some 380 390 maybe even a 400 inch bull i mean is that still a reality to have you know one or two three of those around in the unit yeah it is uh, i i hate when guys come out and throw that number those numbers around but <laughs> It's, uh, they're there. I mean, that one of the bulls that we were chasing in the archery season, uh, we missed him twice. We actually capitalized on the bull on the early rifle hunt, and the bull went 384. So they, they are there, but they are few and far between. Would you say, you know, five years ago, four or five years ago, um, before the late hunt, before the opened up country, you know, started yielding bulls on those late hunts, would you say that, you know, there's a, you would say benchmark might have been 360, and, you know, yes, you'll see a couple 375-plus bulls, and now that's just kind of ticked down a whole notch of now we're kind of at a benchmark of 350, and yes, 
maybe you'll see, you know, a, a 370 plus bull once or twice throughout the season. So it's kind of come down a whole whole level. Yeah, it, it's definitely come down at least one level, no doubt. I mean, on an average, it, it has come down tremendously over the past, well, basically since the Wallow Fire. Like you said, when all the country got opened up, um, late rifle hunts, they've, they've put a toll on the age class. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still some really nice bulls around, but overall the age class has dropped. Okay, and still talking about Unit 1, and we're going to go into 27 here in a minute, you talk about the late hunt, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's one of those that you know that that late hunt is killing your age class, but it's a pretty decent late elk hunt, is it not? Yeah, it, it's a decent late elk hunt, no doubt. Um, the late hunt in Unit 1 can be a lot tougher if you're really looking for some size. But it, it's a good hunt. You see a lot of nice bulls, you know, from the 300 to 320 class range. Um, but really, to get up north of that 330 range on the Unit 1 late hunt, it's you're really doing something. It's a feat. We jump over to Unit 27. Another thing I've heard about 27 is it's rougher country, more canyon country, not quite as open, does have a little bit of burn area. Talk a little bit about the unit compared to Unit 1. Well, 27, Jay, it's, uh, it, it depends on which hunt you're wanting to consider, but for the archery season, um, yeah. it's not a very action-packed hunt. It's... It's it can be at times, but most you're gonna have a lot more slow days than you are action packed days. And there, because there of the lack of elk or the country, um, it it's a little bit of both. So a lot of the elk will concentrate on top of the mountain, um, but that's also where ninety five percent of your hunters are gonna concentrate as well. So you know that the elk are concentrated up there and it'll get over pressured and over hunted in, in my mind but the country that will hold the really big bulls is usually that stuff that doesn't get hunted a lot but you may only be hunting a couple elk right so you have to in order to find quality you've got to go to the pockets that don't have as many elk, but you got to be prepared to go a few days and maybe you don't even hear an elk, maybe you don't even see or maybe see one or two, but you're only chasing one or two particular bulls. And so it beca becomes a game of, you know, one-on-one -on -one and it becomes a game of, you know, I'm, I'm not here for a bugling frenzy. I'm here to kill one quality elk and I've got to stay away from the the chaos, if you will, up where all the elk and all the people are to get on these outskirts but it may be a grind, is what you're saying. Yeah, and, and and don't get me wrong, there there are big bulls that are in all the mix with everybody else. You know, there's there's too many cows for there not to be a big bull show up. But it, it there's too many tags, in my opinion. It, when you're competing with 220 something other bull hunters and 100 cow hunters, and everybody's kind of bumper to bumper up there and then it turns into a foot race it just you know i don't i don't mind competing one-on-one -on -one with elk but one-on-10 -on with people it's <laughs> it's just turns into a, a foot race and everybody feels like you know they're getting shafted by the other hunters it's, yeah it's not really super fun when i look at i'm looking at go hunt here and i'm looking at these late elk archery so unit one has 11 points it's 100 percent draw it's november 6th through november 19th and then i look at 27 it's november 6th through the 19th and it's um it takes 10 points those hunts with a bow that's got to be difficult do you guide those late archery elk hunts they are difficult, and yes, we, we do guide them, uh, but they are a grind. I mean, we had a guy out this last year, um, and it was day 10 before we sealed the deal on a bull, and it was it was tough. I mean, you, it's a different world when they're not 
rut and, you know. What would you say, does one unit shine over the other on that late archery hunt? Would you, I mean, would you rather guide a, a hunter in unit one as opposed to 27 or vice versa? They're both pretty good. Um, mainly it would kind of depend on what the hunter's expectations were and, and their physical capabilities. Um, unit one can produce some great bulls, um, but it's, it's not as frequent that you're going to see a big bull in unit one as it is in 27. Uh, this year, the firearms, the muzzleloader season in unit one, September 25th through October 1st, uh, be dealing a little bit with a full moon. How do you anticipate uh, that hunt going? And then it looks like the early rifle hunt in 27. Uh, talk about those two uh, early firearm seasons. You know, they're, they're both great hunts, um, but the problem is, is, is you still, people, you know, they burn 20-something points on these hunts, and they think, you know, it's a slam dunk, and they're going to go home with a 380-plus bull. That, that's not reality. They're, you still got to hunt your butt off. It's, it's a grind, and it can be mentally exhausting when you are set your sights so high for a, a great animal you know you got to give it your all for the full seven days that moves us to uh late elk hunting in unit 27 um i hear a lot of people saying as far as late elk hunt goes 27's about as good of late elk hunt as arizona provides your thoughts on that it is definitely um uh, for, for the areas that we hunt, it's number one late hunt on my list. It's, uh, you know, it's got some great glassing. It's got <clears throat> big, nasty country where the bulls can still hide and get a little age on them, even with all the tags that are pumped out. Um, it, it's a great hunt. As far as size quality, I mean, yeah, you're dealing with broken antlers, right? But, I mean, you could, in fact, on a late hunt in 27, you could shoot potentially as big a bull as you could shoot in the rut hunt, could you not, on the firearms hunt? Oh, no doubt. The The biggest bull we took this past season was on the Unit 27 late hunt. and How big was it? He was right at 390. 390. So... What, what I see that hunt is those deep, dark canyons, you know, those bulls retreat from New Mexico, those bulls retreat from, you know, Unit 1. They they go to that country to to live out the winter, and you guys know that country really well, and you just go pick them apart, and that's where you can find a good bull. Right, yeah, it's, it's, it's not nice country by any means. Um, you know, you got to have somebody who's in great physical condition and, and willing to put in some miles and a lot of time behind the glass. But it, it really is a great hunt. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those hunts where you can, you know, say, hey, I really want to hold out for a 340-plus bull, and it's 100% doable. Would it, will it be way north of 340? Mm, odds are no, but is the chance there? No doubt. Yeah. That's good stuff. So with everything going on, you think um, this year is shaping up. If, if we just have average from here on out as far as moisture, you think it'll be probably as good as uh, antler growth as last year? I do. I, I think we're going to see another really good year for horn growth. And, uh, you know, not to mention, Jay, I think we, uh, we had some really good weather that hit us kind of just before and during the late rifle hunt this past year and that weather was great for the moisture this coming year and it also i mean it it saved a pile of bulls there were guys that couldn't even get around and didn't really know what to do when that snow hit and i, I would be shocked if the success rates this past season weren't extremely lower than previous seasons so you think that storm that hit uh, that that Thanksgiving storm that hit is actually going to create some holdover bulls that made it through in both Unit 1 and 27, and both units are, have a really good chance to shine this year. No doubt. 
No doubt. It, it, it was, a, I mean, it was a big, nasty storm, and, and if you would have seen all the people stuck and and trying to get around in snowshoes, it was it was pretty comical. <laughs> all the Phoenix people came up there and acted like mountain people. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it it was it was a nasty storm, no doubt. It just, uh, you know, the bulls were still up in that stuff, but it was it was hard to get around in it, and you know, it's hard to walk in twenty plus inches of snow and really cover a lot of country. Yeah. Justin, it's always great talking to you about the, the units that you love. Uh, I encourage, again, guys, follow this, these guys on Instagram, premium underscore hunts. Justin, I also want to give you a chance to let the listeners know uh, before the draw here how they can reach out if they have any last-minute questions and, and uh, how they can follow along the stuff, you, the content and your website and what have you. Yeah, if anybody, you know, has any questions, feel free to contact us either uh, – Facebook, Instagram, our webpage, um, premiumhunts.com, or or call us anytime. All our contact info is listed on our webpage. So feel free to get us get a hold of us any way you want. Awesome, man. Well, God bless, and um, looking forward to seeing how you guys do this fall. And you guys always you you always just do really really solid work and kill some really good animals and. You know, um, deer as well. You guys m- mop them up good on the deer, and we'll we'll be talking when we get to New Mexico. Uh, we'll cover uh, New Mexico a little bit more in depth. I encourage guys to reach out to Justin, see what uh, kind of landowner um, draw options he has, what kind of landowner tags he has, um, anything that he's got up his sleeve in New Mexico. So, Justin, as always, uh, thanks for uh, coming on and sharing with us. Uh, guys, uh, you guys listen to the podcast. I really appreciate your loyalty listening to this podcast. Uh, and thank you for supporting the sponsors, Go Hunt Insider. Make sure you, uh, if you're not a Go Hunt Insider member, check it out. It's the best Western hunting resource out there. Go to gohunt.com forward slash Scott. You're going to get a $50 Go Hunt gift card, a gear shop gift card just for signing up. Also want to thank Cody Nelson, my man at the optics department of Go Hunt. Uh, they just won the Swarovski Optic Dealer of the Year Award, which is an amazing feat uh, for, for a company that's only been in business for two years. Cody's the optics manager. You can reach out to him if you have any binoculars, spotting scopes, rifle scopes, range finders, tripods, anything to do with glassing, give him a call. Uh, you can purchase stuff. Uh, he does a great job for the JSO listeners. Uh, 702-847-8747. That's extension 2. I want to thank Cody. Uh, you can also send him a text uh, directly on his cell phone, 602-399-3699. Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. Kuyu is the gear that I wear on all my hunts. Go to kuyu.com. That's K-U-I-U.com. Uh, phonescope.com. Use the JSCOT20 promo code. It's going to save you 10%. Uh, and onxmaps.com. Go to um, onxmaps.com. Use the JSCOT20 promo code. It's going to save you 20%. Uh, Guys, I'm going to be at the Western Hunting Expo here in about uh, 10 days. I'll be walking around. I'd love to meet up with you. If you see me, look me up at the show. I'm looking forward to um, meeting a lot of new listeners and Instagram followers. I appreciate all the support. Justin, again, thanks for coming on and sharing uh, your knowledge with us. And uh, I encourage the listeners to reach out to you, and God bless. Okay, buddy? Thanks a lot, Jay. Have a good day. All right, take care.